الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علیہ و صحبہ وسلم اما بعد اللہم لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ حدیتنا و حبلنا من دونک رحم انکا انت الوحاب We ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with ikhlas, with thabat, and bless us with ilm nafi, ruzkan tayyibu, amana muttaqabbilin, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a very important principle for us to be aware of, to learn, and practice and implement. And this has to do with when doubtfulness comes in our salat, or doubtfulness comes in our purification, or doubtfulness comes in our tawaf, when we're making tawaf, making umrah or hajj, to, uh, when we have doubtfulness about the number of rakat in our prayer, for example, which which uh, rakah are we in? Or which, uh, which when we're making tawaf, when we're going around the Kaaba, which number is it? You know, are we, is this five or six, uh, et cetera? Or did I uh, pass gas at Kromakum Allah uh, during the prayer or not? Did I, uh, do I need to make wudu again? All of these kind of questions can be answered with a very simple qaida. And Allah does not hold us accountable for that which we are unable to fill. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He's the most beneficent and he's the most merciful. And his deen subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a difficult uh, religion to practice. It is built upon ease, but is built upon sincerity to Allah and following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's take a look in, in detail, uh, look at one of the ahadith which establishes this principle which the ulama have, uh, have deduced from this uh, incredibly important nas from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam qalas uh, an Ubad ibn Tameen an Abdullah ibn Zayd ibn Asim uh, bin Asim al-Mazani qala shukiya ila nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rajulun yukhailu ilayhi anahu yajidu shayfi salat faqala la yansarafu hatta yasma'a sawtin aw yajida rihan ruwahu bukhari wa muslim in this hadith which was narrated in bukhari and muslim uh, that uh, ubad ibn tamim who reported that uh, uh, abdullah bin zayd or uh, an abdullah bin zayd ibn asim al mazani who said that a uh, a man he complained to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or shukri ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rajulu so a man he uh, complained to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he believed he thought perhaps that he passed gas during the, the prayer akramakum Allah that he uh, flatulated or whatever you call it uh, I don't know what the technical term is but he passed gas during the prayer فقال, the Prophet وسلم, responded to the man he said do not leave the prayer unless you hear something or you smell something and this was collected in Bukhari and Muslim this hadith azim shows us that our religion is built upon yaqeen, it's built upon certainty. And that we always return to that which is certain. And we leave the doubtful things. Because the doubtful means are more often waswas or whisperings from the shaitan. Let's talk about in, de in depth about what this means for us. Uh, Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala said, Min qawaid al-Islam al amma وأصوله التي تبني عليها أو تبنى عليه الأحكام الكثيرة الجليلة وهي أن الأصل بقى الأشياء متيقنة على حكمها. This is beautiful. Imam Nawawi رحمه الله تعالى said this from this hadith that this is a قاعدة 
or min kawaid al Islam. This is from the one of the principles of Islam, one of the general principles of Islam and its foundations. And that it is, and, and that it is built upon it, that uh, many rulings, many, many rulings in Islam are built upon this hadith and built upon this qaida. Very important that we know what this qaida, this principle is. And he said, and it is that the foundation of something is, it rests or it stays upon certainty, it rests upon certainty. What does this mean? This means that when you are certain of something, then doubtfulness does not remove that certainty. That's imperative that we understand that. And there, that's what the hukum, the hukum is related to that. The ruling is related to that. مُتَيَقِّنَ عَلَى حُكْمِهَا فَلَا يُعَدِّلْ عَنْهَا لِمَجَرِدِ الشَّكُوكُ وَظُنُونَ So, doubtfulness and thinking perhaps that the opposite of what it originally was upon does not remove the certainty. Certainty is not removed by, by doubt. Let's talk about some amthila, some examples here. Uh, Imam, um, Imam Abdullah ibn uh, Abdurrahman Ali Bassam, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, he said, so as long as a person is certain about his purity, for example, your, your tahara, you know you made wudu, for example, you made wudu for dhuhr, okay? And you prayed with that wudu. And when it comes close to Salat al-Asr, you believe, you think you might have broke your wudu. What should you do? You should return to what you're certain of. You're certain you made your wudu because you prayed on it for dhuhr. Now Salat al-Asr has come in and you have shuck, you have doubt. You think maybe I went to the bathroom, I can't remember. Did I pass gas? Did I go to the restroom? Oh, we were at the park, I wasn't sure. I was playing. Did I pass gas when I was excited? No. You go back to what you're certain of. What are you certain of? You're certain that you prayed dhuhr. You're certain that you had wudu, you had tahara for dhuhr. You are on tahara now. And Allah does not hold you accountable for your doubtfulness. That is the principle. That is the principle the Prophet ﷺ gave us in that hadith. And that the ulama of Islam have uh, uh, deduced from that hadith and others. Rahimahumullah jami'an. Let's look at another situation. Let's look at that exact same situation. You prayed dhuhr and you were certain you were on tahara. And then, now it's close, Salat al-Asr is in, you just heard the adhan or what have you. And you were playing football or whatever and you're sure that you passed gas then. You're sure that something came out. Or you remember going to the restroom. And, and now, your certainty is that you broke your wudu. Is that you, when you were playing football, you passed gas, or you went to the restroom, and akramakum Allah, you did whatever you had to do in there. And now, your certainty is that you broke your wudu. And you can't remember if you washed yourself. I don't remember, did I make wudu? After that, I can't exactly remember. I'm not sure. I was in the restroom. I usually make wudu, but I don't remember. You go back to what you're certain to, certain, certain of. You're certain you broke your wudu when you were playing football. Now you must make wudu. So again, it goes back to that which you are certain of. For example, another example. Maybe you have went to the restroom and there was some urine on the seat and it got on your clothing or it got on your body and you you uh, cleaned yourself and you used tissue and you washed yourself you got the urine off and you had tissue but then the tissue fell on your carpet okay because some people have questions about this the the tissue fell on your carpet and it was a uh, it had najasa on it it had water and najasa mixed on it and it falls on your carpet. Is your carpet now 
impure, uh, impure? Can you pray on that carpet? Some of the particles from your, your, your tissue paper or the tissue paper itself, the full paper, fell on your carpet. Can you pray on that carpet? Of course you can. Why? Because the tissue does not carry the tahara on your, your place of prayer. Unless that thing was so soaked with najasa that it left the impurity on your, your, your mat, on your prayer mat, or on your rug, or on your couch, or on your car, or whatever. If it left a uh, some ather, some of um, evidence of its impurity on that object, then yes, then that object has impurity, wipe and clean the object. Use water, as the Prophet ﷺ ordered us when the Bedouin uh, gave us alayhi salatu wasalam in the hadith where qama uh, a'rabi fa فَبَالَ فِي الطَّيْفَةُ الْمَسْجِدِ فَزَجْرُهُ النَّاسِ فَنَهَاهُمْ نَبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِلَى آخِرَ حَدِيثٍ In the hadith where the Bedouin, he came in the masjid, the masjid al-haram, masjid al-Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم. He came in the masjid and he just started peeing in the masjid. The Prophet صلى الله عليه the, the people got very upset. They wanted to, to, to bust this guy up, to cause him harm. And they were upset, they were, you know, Speaking ill about him, wanted to hurt him. فَزَجِرُهُ nas And the Prophet ﷺ said, Da'u, said, leave him and let him finish. The Prophet allowed this man, this shows us the mercy and the, the wisdom of the Prophet ﷺ as well and his, his, his excellence in, in teaching, alayhi salatu wasalam, that he left the man to finish his urinating, urinate, urinating in the masjid. Related to what we're talking about, this shows us then the Prophet ﷺ used water to purify that spot. So we should use water if we are sure that the impurity is on our place of prayer. It's in our car. It's on our uh, rug in the house or the couch or whatever. And we're sure that there's urine there and there's some najasa there. We're to ekit. We're, we're sure. Then, then pour water and remove the ashkal. Remove the, the problem. The problem, problem is removed by cleaning it. Cleaning it with water. Pour water on it and be finished with it. And that way we can remove the doubt. Let's look at some of the benefits from this hadith. That gives us just related to our, our purification. Some of the benefits that uh, Shaykh um, Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned, he said, Al-Qa'id al-Am wa hiya an al-Asl baqa' ma kana ala ma kan. He said <coughs> that from this hadith, we get the general principle that the foundation of something remains upon what uh, rem remains upon its foundation for example we gave the example that if you are sure that something is pure then it remains uh, on its pu it's uh, in its purity unless you are sure something changed it from that so it stays upon what it originally was upon and for example your thobe uh, the shaykh gives some examples here um, about the, the thobe and he gives examples about uh, your place of prayer or a place. The asl of those things, the foundation of those things is that they are pure. They're on tahara. So for example, carpets, couches, pillows, clothing. The asl of it is tahara. The asl al libas, the asl al ashya tahur. Most things, the, the origin of, uh, of, of things is that they are pure. Unless you are certain that something nudges comes to change that impurity. That's imperative that we understand that. That will answer so many of our questions that we won't need to constantly ask the same questions to the, to the scholars or to the students of knowledge about minor issues of, 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 of tahara and so forth that we should be well grounded in if we study this hadith and understand this principle. And that takes, of course, understanding it. Bi'idhnillah ta'ala, may Allah bless us with the understanding. Ameen. Another benefit the Shaykh mentioned, he said that inna al mujarrad shaqi fil hadithi la yubtil al wudu'a wa la salat. He said that the fact that there is doubtfulness about whether a person broke their wudu or needs to make ghusl. They, they're doubtful about this. That does not nullify a person's wudu, nor does it nullify a person's prayer. 
So again, you go, you always return to that which you are certain of. If you're praying, let's give an example, or the Sheikh is going to give us that example. Thalith, the third thing, he said, Tahrim al insiraf min al salat li ghayr al sabab bayin. So this isn't the example that we wanted, but the Sheikh said, uh, gave us a benefit. He said, another benefit from this hadith is that it is impermissible for you to leave the prayer uh, for without a, a clear reason, meaning that you're certain, that you're certain. For example, you are, you are, cl- you are certain that you pass gas. Not that you, the shaitan is whispering, oh, I'm not sure, but no. But in fact, you know. And the Prophet ﷺ gave us the dhabit, dhabitan in this hadith. He gave us two criterion for determining whether we need to leave the prayer. Uh, if you pass gas. He said, لا ينصرف حتى يسمع صوتن أو يجد أريهن. He said, do not leave unless you hear something, you hear a noise, meaning you hear that you pass gas, or you smelt a smell. So those are the dhabitan that let us know that uh, uh, to give us yaqeen that you need to leave the prayer. If you felt something minor, you know, it, perhaps this could be a whispering from the shaitan. Okay? So you will be able to tell if you need to leave the prayer and you have passed gas. Akramakum uh, Allah. Another thing related to this hadith that the mashayikh, they mention, is that, for example, the person who is making tawaf, or the person who is, uh, has doubt about the number of prayer units they've prayed, they're praying Salat al-Asr, for example, and they're not sure if this is their last rakah or this is their third rakah. Then the asl is you go back to the third rakah because you are certain that you did number three and you are doubtful if it is number four. And that's a beautiful principle, mashallah, tabarakallah, that we've gained from the ulama, that you hear this constantly mentioned from them, that you go back to the asl. The asl is, there's no doubt, if you're doubting about three or four, then for sure you've done four, that's the yaqeen, and you are in doubt about number, I mean, for sure you've done number three, but you are in doubt about number four. So go back to number three, that you are on the third rakah, not on the fourth one. And the same thing with uh, tawaf and other than that. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And let this be a benefit to us in practicing our religion.